in the previous two lectures we discussed about turing machines and uh, languages represented by them and today we are going to discuss about another application for turing machines not as language representatives but just like a computer it can do other functions as well and what we are going to discuss as an application for turing machine in this lecture is turing machines as transducers so what we so yesterday as an application is turing machine as language acceptors just like the other classes of automata that we studied but for turing machines we are going to discuss about turing machines as transducers that is transforming an input to an output just like a computer program and before we see the first uh, turing machine which produces some result based on input say sum of two numbers like sum of two numbers we need to discuss about unary representation consider a set capital a with the three elements alpha beta and gamma how we can represent these elements of the set as strings in a singleton alphabet set you have to encode these as strings in an alphabet set with only one alphabet take it as one so how can you represent this is a possibility you represent the first element of the set as 1 second element as 1 1 and the third element as 1 1 1 so each one is is a string of ones but different so what we are telling is in general for a finite set the ith element can be uniquely represented by a string of ones with the length i you can say that it is 1 raised to i this is 1 raised to 1 1 raised to 2 1 raised to 3 3 three occurrences of 1 that is the notation that is a string of length string of ones of length i now can you extend it how we can represent the elements of natural numbers which is an infinite set in unary representation using the alphabet set 1 you can do it given any natural number k it can be uniquely represented by a string of ones of length k or 1 to the power k examples 3 can be represented as 3 ones 5 can be represented as 5 ones and 7 can be represented as 7 ones so that is a unary representation it is a very simple representation where the first element can be represented as 1 second element as 1 1 likewise you can represent or if you are given with a representation say 10 ones that means that 10 ones is representing the 10th element of the set now we can look at a turing machine as a transducer reading two numbers as input and producing the sum of those numbers as output but the turing machine will be reading the numbers in the unary representation example suppose you are given with a turing machine where the tape after the left hand marker contains unary representations of two numbers a and b separated by a hash symbol so a is 3 and the b is 2 okay because that is the unary representation if the unary 
representation of a natural number is 3 ones, the number is 3. And if it is 2 ones, it is 2. So, you are given with the input 3 and 2 and you have to find the sum of 3 and 2. And how will you find it? At the end of processing, the machine should enter the accept state t and the tape content should be the sum of the two numbers. So, it is 5, so it should be represented by 5 ones. So, we need 5 ones after the left hand marker, then blanks in all other tape cells. That is what we need. And how you can do it? That you can decide. I am going to give you one way of doing it, but you can decide how you are going to do it. So, what I am doing is remaining in the state yes, moving all the way to the right until I move to the cell with the first blank simple. While I am moving, I am retaining all the, the left hand marker and all the ones, but I am going to replace the hash with a one. You may ask me why I am doing it. That is how I am going to do it. Just hold on and understand what I am trying to do. Okay, you, you may do it in a different way, but I am going to do it like this. So, remain in the state as yes, go all the way to the right. While going, retain left hand marker and ones and replace hash with a one. So, what are the transitions required? Remain in the state as yes. If it is a left hand marker, keep it and move right. If it is a 1, keep it and move right. If it is a hash, replace it 1, it with 1 and move right. So, after doing all these operations, this will be what I am getting. All the 1s are retained, hash, the third simple is replaced with a 1 and all the other two 1s are also retained. This is what I am getting, right. So, what is the configuration now? Actually, I got one more 1, right. 3 plus 2 is 5, but I have got one more one. So, my idea is now move back and change this one to a blank simple. That is my idea. Okay. Change for that, change the state to a temporary state P, retain the blank simple and move one position to the left. So, I am saying if you are in small s and reading a blank simple, you change your state to P retain that blank simple and move left. If I apply this transition, this is what I am getting. The blank simple is retained, moving left and I am now in the state P. Now, I think you know what to do. I know that I have to cancel a 1. So, what I do from P, just replace this 1 with a blank, change to the accepting state T is what I can do. Okay, this is what I wanted to do. If you are in P and uh, reading a 1 as the tape simple, you change your state to T, replace that 1 with blank and move left. It does not matter whether you move left or right. So, if you do that, see that I have 5 ones on the tape and that is representing the sum of 3 and 2. This is one logic. You may do it in a different way. But you can do it. So, what I did is I moved all the way to the right while moving I retained the left hand marker and ones, but I replaced the hash with a one. Okay, so, everywhere I have one, but that additional one is getting added. So, what I do after moving to the right, I wanted to replace the last one with a blank simple and that gives me the required result. Okay, so what we are now getting is a Turing machine which will take the unary representation of two natural numbers separated by hash as input and produces the unary representation of their sum as output. So, we are getting a Turing machine for adding two numbers just like a computer. A computer is representing numbers in binary but my Turing machine is representing numbers in unary. That is the only difference. Now, Turing machine for subtraction. 
Suppose you are given with uh, two numbers a and b separated with a hash, a and b are represented using unary. So, initially assume that the tape content is the unary representation of a, a number of ones, unary representation of b, b number of ones, they are separated with a hash and the first symbol is always the left hand marker. And after the non-blank part, you have blank symbols on all the tape cells. And for this problem, because you want to subtract B from A, assume that A is greater than or equal to B, only then this operation is enabled. So, do you have any idea? You can do it in different ways. I am giving you a particular way of doing it. So, what I am going to do is replace the rightmost ones before and after the hash with the blank. So, what I am telling is replace the rightmost one here this one and after the hash this one with the blank symbol. So, I am actually cancelling a one from here with a one from there. So, this is what I wanted to do. The rightmost one before and after hash is getting replaced with blank and I will repeat it until I finish all the ones after the hash. Okay? So, I will keep on doing it. What I did is for each one after the hash, I found a one here and I replaced both of them in each round with blank. So, if you do this, what happened is you have erased all ones, equal number of ones from this side as there are ones here. So, the remaining number of ones here is actually the result that you need. Okay? So, now there is one more problem. The result is obtained, but there is a hash that you have to replace with a blank symbol. You do it now. Replace the hash with a blank symbol. And now, after that, you change to the state T. That is enough. And for doing that, not that you have to move right and left a number of times, but you can do it. The concrete set of transition functions are not given to you, but you can easily get it. Okay. So, that is how you get a Turing machine for subtraction. And now see that at the end, what you have is a single 1 which is actually 3 minus 2. In general, if it is m 1s and uh, n 1s here, where m is greater than or equal to n, then you will get m minus n 1s remaining in the tape and everywhere else you put blank and you are in the state t. Okay? So, now see that what you got is a Turing machine for adding two numbers and uh, subtracting a number from another number. Now, we can formally define what is a transducer. A Turing machine which transforms its input to the output of a function it represents. Then it is called a transducer. Okay. So, we have seen Turing machine for addition and subtraction. You know that you can do multiplication with repeated additions. So, that is also possible. Similarly, you can do division with a repeated subtraction. So, that is again possible. So, you can do all the basic arithmetic operations with a Turing machine. And you can also check for A greater than B. How will you check whether A is greater than B or not? You just like this logic, you cancel once from the right side before and after, you keep on doing this. And if both are equal, you will cancel all the ones. That means A is equal to B. If number of ones remains in one side, that means that number is greater than the other number. So, it is easy to check whether A is greater than or equal to B or A, or A, A equal to B or A is less than B. That also you can do. Okay? So, it looks like all the basic comparison and uh, arithmetic operations are possible with the Turing machine 
just like what an arithmetic and logic unit in a computer can do. An ALU can do addition, subtraction, multiplication and division which a tuning machine can also do. It can, ALU can perform comparison that a tuning machine can also do. Okay, and this gives us a clue that the Turing machine is as powerful as our digital computer. With this, we are coming to the last slide of this lecture where I am giving you two exercise problems for you to practice how can you design Turing machines as transducers. Okay, design a Turing machine to find the product of two natural numbers A and B. How will you do it? Assume that A and B are represented in unary and they are separated with a hash symbol. So what you can do is, you can copy the first sequence of ones after the second number for every one in the second number. So for every one in the second number, you copy the first sequence of one to the right side of the tape. Okay, suppose uh, the first number is M and the second number is n. n times you are copying m number of ones. So you will get n into m ones in the right side and after you do that you change all the uh, shift it to the left side or whatever you can do you can do multiplication. Okay, it is not repeated addition you can directly do multiplication. And division also you can do in a very similar way. Okay, and that is the first problem, you do multiplication with your machine. And the second problem, you check whether a natural number A is greater than another natural number B. And here again you assume that A and B are given in unary and initially the tape content after the left hand marker is the unary representation of A followed by a hash followed by the unary representation of B. I told you the logic, how will you do it? So with this, uh, we are finishing this lecture. Today we looked at Turing machines as uh, transducers. Using unary representation, we have seen how we can design a Turing machine which can find the sum of two numbers and uh, which can subtract a number from another number. In each case, the representation is use this unary and uh, the exercise addresses the multiplication. Similarly, you can do division and also the exercise asks you to implement comparison. So, it looks like all the basic operations that an ALU can perform can also be performed by a standard Turing machine and hence it is at least as powerful as an ALU. And when we discuss about uh, universal Turing machine in the next lecture, we can conclude that the Turing machine is just like a digital computer in power. And for getting into such a conclusion, we need to discuss about universal Turing machine that we shall do in the next lecture. Thank you.